Wireless Festival lineup has been announced. Wireless Festival 2019 is coming. Um, I don't know why I'm doing that. I'm just doing that to get hyped because I, I never go. Never been to Wireless Festival. It was meant to go la- a couple of years ago, but didn't end up going. Um, my brothers have been a couple of times and they fucking loved it. But my brothers are in that perfect age range for Wireless Festival. They're between 21 and 26 or yeah let's say no let's say 19 and 26 they're in a perfect age bracket to enjoy wireless right they have enough of a uh a, a, they have enough of a repertoire knowledge base of music in order to deem what's good or not um they like what they like based on their age and um all of their groups all of their social groups their friends whatever go there or wish they could be there for, for those kids wireless is probably like their coachella for the most part it really is it's like the biggest thing for them they were talking about it for after the festival it's like when i went to la i kind of remember i was um, annoying the brunette and a few of my friends because i was talking about la like for like i don't know maybe three months after i went right because it was such an amazing experience when i went to see golf i went to see, went to the golf wang festival went to go to the laugh factory i saw crystal Leah perform i saw whitney um i saw sorry i saw tiffany haddish before she was a star all that sort of shit right so i went to i went i went to the um, uh, Rainbow Cafe um, and bumped into a few celebrities there. Like you know, like um, they they see it as a big as a big 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 social occasion in their calendar. So I'm sure my brothers have probably bought a ticket already. For them, it's a big big deal. And I guess for us oldies, it's also a bigger deal too because it's probably the only time we're going to get to see that kind of range of artists, especially hip hop wise, urban wise, whatever you may deem them to be all in one arena, all in one place, right? It's quite rare to see the people all together in one place because for the most part, some of these American artists, especially the bigger ones, don't tour in Europe or no, don't come to London that often or when they do as part of like a big tour that usually sells out quite quickly. So you get the chance to see loads of a variety of hip hop acts all in one time during a, you know, during a weekend um, in a park that's, you know, fairly close to most people that live in in that live in london um of course over the years it's got really really popular maybe because of the drake effect a couple of years ago but i've seen these certain years or the previous years it's starting to sell out really quickly and that means that not only is it getting popular but also the scary thing is that the kids between 19 and 26 are now getting wise to festival calendars right and are now getting wise to saving up money beforehand because that's part of the process of when like when i used to go to stuff like um download festival when you go to stuff like um what's that festival you go to anyway a few other love box and stuff whatever when it wasn't cool within the let's say the black community for the most part um you would hear people say oh why are you going to that white people shit why are you going to these festivals da, 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 right it will kind of be um you know they'll kind of you know pull their nose up at it then especially you told them the price right the price of tickets has always been high like 100 quid 120 quid like what the fuck that's mad why do you go to that festival da, 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 da. they never kind of got into the buying culture of like let's go to the festival the benefits of it they never really got it and you know for most i think people from the ends when they hear festival they think of like you know glastonbury and best of one people in the mud and shit and camping and pissing and not fucking showering for three days that's what most people in the ends think of but of course as time has progressed and festivals have got a bit more um polished a little bit more refined people are now seeing that festivals are more than just that right they're not just like camping in the woods somewhere they can just be like a festival can just be something that happens um during the day closes at night starts again in the morning closes at night right you don't have to stay there it's kind of gonna be a, like like coachella basically in, in that respect um there's different between a coachella and a burning man right they're, they're kind of two different experiences so now because of that i've seen a, there's a difference in buying culture because this means that or buying habits or pers- or prospecting what you want to do in the summer this means that sp- people from the ends are deciding what they want to do for summer holidays whatever they want to do because they even i've seen it's quite popular especially my, because my brother's always the kind of the, the way i tap into what's happening in the black community and i've seen a lot of um, um companies that they kind of follow on instagram that do these package holiday deals where they go to like um i think it's lisbon i think they might go to ibiza a few other places in spain these package holidays where they, they take kids basically from ends or people from you know the community so so they take them sometimes on a boat sometimes they take them on holiday package deal and they do the whole kind of like island hopping island tour things you know um whatever young people get up to in those kind of islands 
And um, that is, again, uh, kind of the evolution of the buying culture, right? People understanding now there might be quite a lot of value in it as fucking, you know, all for it may seem on paper. It might be quite fun, right? To link up with everyone from all different ends, all different areas of London, meet new girls, meet new guys if you're into guys. Like, it might be quite a cool experience to hang out with. You get go in the sun for a couple of days or a couple of weeks or for a weekend. Usually, package deals are quite... Our price quite well, you know, it's quite a bit of a bargain. It probably includes your flights, your accommodation, your transport and stuff. Just bring spending money extra on top of it. Um, and um, the sellout of this wireless festival has shown again that really people are hip to um, how um, beneficial it is or cost it is to go to a festival. But of course, the lineup is what really sells wireless. And this year's lineup is probably, you know, as good as any ones they've done previously. I've got it here on the screen. Let me get up here, guys, and see it. So this year's lineup on uh oh no that's not that that's that's something else that's um that's rolling loud let me get the other one up wireless festival lineup here we go so this lineup of west by westville was probably as good or even better than the ones they've had previously to be honest um very good range of artists so um let's get it up on here boom so for friday they have Cardi B Amigos, who come probably as a package deal, right? Which is interesting to see, right? Because, you know, I bet you, um, I bet, uh, what's his name? I bet QC, um, of the, um, the quality control guys, I bet they're super happy that they're, what you call it, offset and figure back together, right? Because if they come as a package deal and you have to book them for these events and they weren't together, it'll be so awkward every single time they go on festival. So that's cool. Um, you got Tory Lanez and um lma lma had a big year last year the album booed up obviously took over the charts freddo's been on fire since he's come out of prison tiger also dropped a couple of big hits he's getting a little bit played out because he seems to try to always trying to re reproduce taste but you know that's tiger man he, op he occupies a certain spot within hip-hop right and whether he does Whether he does well, he does it really well. Whether that is, I don't know how to define it, but he does it quite well. Bugs Malone also had quite a big year. Lil Skies, I'm not too familiar with, and I'm not sure if that many people in the UK know who he is, but I'm sure they book these people based on algorithms and metrics on who listens to what. So I'm sure there might be a few people that listen to Lil, Lil Skies, Lil Skies. Um, I am DDB. She's really popular too. A lot of girls like her. I've not listened to a lot of her music. Um, Heady One, I'm familiar with, and I like a lot too. NSG, I've been blowing up, blowing up, blowing up, blowing up. Whenever I play out, usually I always get that's the one request I get quite a lot. Have you got NSG? Have you got NSG? Have you got NSG? That's quite good. Malik Berry will be awesome as per usual. Always a good live performer. B Young, I think, has been on here a couple times in a row now, which is quite a good um, I know, acknowledgement of how good of a live show he must put on in general. Um, so he's a performer again on Friday and they got Yinka, who I'm not familiar with, and Tim Westwood DJing. So that's a stellar lineup on Friday. Then on Saturday, right, to make even, even more fucking FOMO of this, Saturday they've got Travis Scott, Future. They've got Louis Uziver and Young Fug, Juice World and Steph London, Trippy Red and Sheck West, M. Honcho and Sweetie, um, Unknown T and Ambush, uh, Still Bangers and Cadet, Digger T, <laughs> uh, sorry, um, Dig That and Denzel Driz, and DJ Semtex and, and Westwood. Oh my God. And then Sunday, 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 ASAP Rocky, Ray Schmurder, AJ Tracy, Little Baby, Gunner, Notes, Rich the Kid, Ski Master, Slump God, Dezel Curry, D Block Europe, um, Jid, Lowski, Russ, Floyo, I'm not sure that is. Lady San Sanity, I'm not sure that is. Manny Noor, obviously, big DJ and Tim Westwood. Absolutely insane lineup. Absolutely insane. And again, like I mentioned, like I don't have tickets. Tickets are probably always I probably sold out anyway for this thing. So, you know, there's no point even um worrying about if I have tickets or not. But how bad of a lineup that is? How good of a lineup? Sorry, how bad? How good of a lineup do you think that is? Huh? How good a lineup do you think that is? I think it's insane. Absolutely insane. But one thing I was thinking about actually was that if you're a UK artist and this, you know, festival's happening in the UK, it's going to be, a th where is it? Uh, duh, 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 duh. Finsbury Park, right? Um, would you be a little bit bummed out um, with the amount of US centric guests they have on the lineup? Especially considering some of the guests, um, again, this is only because of the poster. I don't give a shit about these kind of things, but I know artists do care. You see the whole controversy that happened recently with uh, Blueface and Rowdy Rich, right? Uh, they were meant to perform at some gig somewhere in America. I think Blueface's name was a bit smaller than Rowdy Rich's. Rowdy Rich looked like a headliner. Um, 
Blueface is like a supporting, of course. Blueface in his defense probably thinks he's had the he's more relevant than Rowdy Rich, even though Rowdy Rich is super really talented too, and someone a lot of people are have high hopes for. And he kind of backed out of the whole concert because he didn't feel like he was getting the respect he wanted on the flyer on the poster. So I'm sure publicists, agents, whoever they are, managers who do all that thing are very um, finicky about where their artists are on the list and how small their text is compared to everyone else. Um, and you saw a little bit of that in the Fire Documentary Festival, right? And the Fire Festival documentary where the kids like kind of stressing over um, over the font size of a certain artist that's featured on the lineup. But I'm wondering if it's a UK based festival, London based for the most part, you know, UK music has been um, popping up this last few years. Um, a lot of the kids, especially my little brothers, they don't listen to any UK US music, if not that much at all. Maybe my youngest brother does a little bit, some Tyler the Creator, some ASAP Rock and shit. But for the most part, they only listen to UK music, only, only UK music. Music. so um a lot of the youth like that's what they listen to on their ipods or their players or whatever they're using their phones with right um so would you be a little bit annoyed that it's quite us heavy and is there um is there is there a what is there like um would it be possible to have a festival that was similar to this that just focused on promoting uk acts whether they be hip-hop whether they you know because i'm sure there's loads of good bands we have loads of good like kind of roots style band like jazzy type bands i'm sure there's loads of really cool girls doing like really interesting versions of pop right it's similar to like mabel and shit like that there must be a lot of people out there who are doing that kind of stuff who could be featured on a stage and it might be a good look for everyone right imagine having notes and then the seeing those guys headlining these shows right and then maybe bringing through a few Afrobeat guys over. Maybe they cost too much, whatever, but is there a reason for it? Or maybe bring over some guys from Europe, right? Some of the French dudes and all that malarkey. Like, it might, is there a reason for it? I think there might be, you know, because as great as Wireless is, looking at the lineup, it just looks like, um, you know, our version of, of Rolling Loud, um, which is interesting too, because I've heard rumors that Rolling Loud, they might start doing, they might um, create a Rolling Loud in London. That's what I've heard. I've heard rumors of they wanting to create partner up with somebody and do a rolling line in, in London because they've got you know they've got L.A., Miami, where else they've got it? Is it Florida? Right, they have got Florida. They got somewhere else. So I've heard they might want to do a rolling loud um, London. And of course, if you're not familiar with rolling loud, um, for the most part, their lineups are you know solely U.S. based and they're kind of you know well known for promoting SoundCloud um, hip hop artists, right? Or hip hop artists for the most part. Um, and kind of like they, they're really for, or really most popular for reacting really quickly if somebody's hot on the internet you know you get booked on that stage really really fast so there might be a there might be a rationale for having there might be an idea for having something of that ilk in the uk maybe not so leaning to hip-hop because maybe you know there might be like i said there might be more music out there than just hip-hop like someone like a, a Bakar, um, I'm I'm thinking of, who's quite popular in the UK. Um, he should maybe be headlining a festival or doing something of that kind of ilk. That would be quite cool to see. Um, but you don't really see it because, again, you know, they're concentrating mostly on that. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm of that thinking. I'd love to see gigs headlining a festival, you know, not being, you know, the second act on the thing. Like, that could be so super cool, interesting to see. But I don't know. What do 